Hi, I'm Dave from Purdue University, Department of Physics and Astronomy, and we're going to give you a little bit of an introduction to impact cratering. Let me start with illustrating the things that you will need. First of all, you'll need some flour. A uh, five pound bag of flour is fine. You'll need about two pounds of cornmeal. Um, those two things will comprise the surface into which we'll be propelling the uh, the uh, impactors. This is about a 12 inch uh, plastic salad bowl. A Tupperware bowl would be fine. Uh, a roasting pan like this would be fine as well. This is, this is what I would call river rock. Uh, these are each about 50 grams. You'd like an assortment maybe of, oh, 25 grams. Here's one that's about 25 grams. These are about 50 grams, maybe up to Oh, 125 or, or so grams. This one is about 130 grams. So that'll give you an idea of the size. Uh, you'll need to know the mass of these. If you don't have a, a scale, like a kitchen scale, that's fine. We can give you an approximation to figure out what the mass would be uh, approximately. Um, you will need a ruler with a centimeter uh, or millimeter scale. Um, any size will do. You'll need a meter stick. If you don't have a meter stick, you can use a yardstick. Uh, you can convert from inches to uh, centimeters, um, ultimately meters, and that'll be fine. You will need something to uh, make the, uh, the surface of your, uh, your terrestrial surface more visible from the underlayers, and that's what the cornmeal will be for. We will, uh, I'll show you how you can dye the cornmeal to make it uh, a little more visible. If you don't want to do cornmeal, uh, the dyeing process can be a little time consuming and messy. Uh, something like uh, pudding mix will work well too. That can just be shaken out onto the surface and it'll give you a visual appearance. Um, you can use something like powdered paint, um, like, the, uh, like what you would mix with water in, in art class. Uh, I'm going to show you how to how to dye the, uh, the cornmeal to make your, uh, your top layer. We'll start with two pounds of cornmeal in a large mixing bowl. To half a cup of water, we'll add the equivalent of a small bottle of food coloring. Once the color is uniform, we'll pour that into a cookie sheet lined with aluminum foil and pop it in the oven for about an hour at uh, 200 degrees. You're going to need to know the mass of the rocks that you've collected. We're going to calculate the energy that the rock has when it hits the ground or the flower. And in order to do that, we need to know how high it is and how much it weighs, what its mass is. So if you have a little scale and you can weigh it, fine. A kitchen scale would be fine as well. If you don't have a scale, no worries. We can make a few approximations and figure out what its mass is, close enough. So let's think about the rock ultimately being a sphere, okay? It's not really a sphere, but it's not too far from that. We're gonna think about its length, width, and height and measure those three dimensions. We'll show you how to do that in the written handout. Okay, so before we get started, let me emphasize a couple things. This will be messy. And so I would say put down a drop cloth, uh, a painter's cloth, an old sheet, newspapers, over an area of about eight feet by eight feet because the flower will fly out of the, out of the bowl and, uh, and it'll get all over. Uh, the second thing I might suggest, if you have safety glasses, you might wear them because um, it's, it's possible, you know, a speck of something would fly out and get in your eye. So, Please be careful. With that, I think let's go ahead and try making some craters. Okay, are we ready? I think so. From the rocks that you've collected, pick one that is medium size, maybe that would fit in the palm of your hand, a rock that's maybe between, oh, let's say 50 and 100 grams. That's the rock we will use for part one, where we will be adjusting the height that we drop it from. So just for demonstration purposes, 
Let's drop, now here's 40 centimeters on my meter stick. We'll drop from 40 centimeters. Three, two, one. Okay, we have a crater. Okay, so here's our crater. I'd like to know a few things. First of all, I'm interested in the ejecta. That's this material that has been uh, cast out from, uh, from the impact. Uh, that's the, the upper layer of, of uh, the terrain, and it splatters out in all directions. Sometimes you can even see kind of a pattern, like a ray coming out. And in fact, those are called rays. So let's get a measurement. I would say that is about six centimeters in that direction, uh, maybe five centimeters in that direction. And we have ejecta that's coming out from the center, oh, about another five centimeters, uh, at least on that side. So there's one example. Now that was from 40 centimeters. Let's do one a little higher. And let's add a little more cornmeal. And I'm going to add a little powdered paint just again for the effect of having two colors. All right, let's do another drop using the same stone and see what happens. So this time, let's go 70 centimeters. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, wait, you know what? Let's do this in slow motion. Whoa, that is a spectacular crater. Notice the ejecta that's come out all the way around. Okay, uh, thank you for joining us for Impact Cratering. I think you know enough now to go ahead and get started for yourself. So we'll see you at the upcoming Zoom webinar. Uh, until then, tell your friends about Saturday morning astrophysics at Purdue. You have been smacked.